Oh, look at they're all coming for it. They're all coming for it. <gasps> oh, there we go, fish on. <laughs> With the underwater camera rolling. Wow, look at that. Guys, welcome to another episode. I have been living out in the mountains for the last four days. We are at High Mountain Camp at a beautiful lake. And we've got our fishing gear ready to go. There are trout down here rising everywhere right now. And you can actually see them just in the water swimming around. There's one right here. There's one right here. Check it out. So we're going to try to sight fish them. But the mission besides having fun with our little trout friends right there, maybe eating one or two of them, is going to be getting out of the mountains with no food, no water. So we're bordering a survival mission. So there's also an extreme like weather window, like a lightning storm coming in here tomorrow. So we cannot stay here one more day. We got to get out of here. Let me show you guys how remote we are in these mountains. <laughs> we have to climb all the way around here, all the way down the mountain, down into a valley back there then down into the valley there and all the way in that deep valley we have to get all the way back out around that mountain but we're going to try and climb even higher where there's three beautiful small lakes i don't know if there's fish in them but there's only one way to find out that's just been my view i mean this is the best campsite in the world there's, there's just endless amounts of fish out there so i'm seeing the trout everywhere down here just kind of swimming around. So I'm wondering if we can just like sight fish one. Let's see what happens if we cast kind of right in front of them. Oh, did not like the lure falling in the water. Ooh, there's another trout right there. More trout right there behind the, uh, right behind the sun, unfortunately. So the splash itself scares them a little bit, I watched. So how about we way overcast on one and then reel into it. There's one. Oh, he's looking at it. He's looking at it. Following a little. Following a little. Huh? Lost interest. It's interesting. They kind of, they, they check it out, follow it for a while, probably to find out what the heck is that. And then the, that's when they decide whether or not they want to eat it. So I just tied up a new setup. We've got a little fly that I tied up under an itty bitty bobber. Fly fishermen call these things strike indicators, but it's just a baby bobber. Oh, look at them. They're right down here. Right down here, do you see them? Oh, they're rising, they're rising. Do you see those two, two trout down there? They don't see me yet. And the fly's sinking, fly's sinking. They were spooked just a little bit by the uh, bobber hitting the water. All right, we need a spot where we can just hide right behind these rocks. I'm just gonna lean back. Oh, there's a trout right in front of us. Oh, there we go, fish on, baby. <laughs> he took that fly. Oh, the, the second one's going for the bobber. The second one's going for the bobber. This is insane. Look at that. Could not resist the fly. That's right, you can fly fish with your spin, spin rod. That other trout is still hanging out. He was like, what is going on? My buddy's like chasing something and I don't know what it is. Beautiful trout. Let's bring him right over here. Beautiful west slope cutthroat trout there we go flies out he's out of here <laughs> that was some insane action i mean he was on it right away let's go ahead and just sneak around here though and see if maybe there's another trout cruising the shallows somewhere oh there's one right there there's one in that pool right there have to sneak just a little closer There's two, there's two, there's two. Bobber down, there we go, fish on. Oh, we got another one. Unbelievable, unbelievable how hard they are hitting those little flies, the sinking fly right now. Look at the fish down there. That is amazing. Come here, come here. Ooh, I almost stepped in the water. <laughs> Oh, how cool was that? Wet her hand just a little bit. Gorgeous west slope cutthroat. Absolutely amazing. 
let's go ahead and get this little guy right back in the water. <laughs> there he is. He's out of here. But right here is a perfect spot to set this camera up. All right, we got an underwater camera set. Now, what we gotta do is just wait for the trout to kind of chill out. They're a little spooked right now, obviously. So we're gonna hang here and hide right behind this rock. We're gonna try and fish that bobber with the fly. And the moment we see one come by, whoop, cast it right on him and see what happens. All right, bobber rod is ready to go. We're gonna hide right here now by this rock. In the meanwhile, what I'm gonna do is cast, cast this little panther martin and see if we can't lure one in with this. Oh, he's looking at it. He's so looking at it. He was so curious. So many trout out there right now. There's a trout right there rolling around in the water. I want to get the camera right over here. Just gonna go down low here to blend in. Oh, 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 they're looking at it. Oh, they're looking at it. Ooh, there's a bunch of fish here. Bunch of them here. Come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Take it, take it. That's a bobber down. Fish on. <laughs> We got him. We got him right in front of the camera. Oh, there we go. We're gonna go ahead and ooh, 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 ooh. Beautiful fish, beautiful, beautiful. Let's go ahead and bring him right here. Right here, this is a really good size. That's gonna be food. This is a food fish for sure. A big bellied, west slope, cutthroat trout. Could not resist the fly right there. Took it right up in the lip. Look at how red the cutthroat marking is. That's gorgeous. All right, let's go. That was amazing, but I just have to retrieve the camera real quick. So we're going to sneak back in here, see if any trout have kind of congregated in that hole. There's like 10 trout right there in that bay. There's a whole bunch of them. Oh, look at, they're all coming forward. They're all coming forward. <gasps> That's like a swarm of 20 trout that just came for the lure. All right, here, let's do that again. A little further this time. A couple of them checking it out. Oh, a couple checking out. Oh, look at them all coming in. <sighs> We're gonna try that one more time, come on. Come on, baby, come on, come on. Oh, there's so many of them, oh, so many of them. Oh, he's looking at it, he's looking at it. Oh, they followed it right to shore. Followed it right to shore. All right, there we go. Just a little bit hesitant, that's for sure. Maybe if we go really slow. Ooh, look at them all come in. Oh, there we go, fish on! <laughs> <laughs> We got one. <laughs> oh, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. He popped right off. That's awesome. Wow. Let's see if we can do it again. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. <laughs> Fish on. <laughs> this baby in the water let's go what a beautiful beautiful west slope cutthroat trout slammed the bullet lure look at the colors on this guy's tail you know what we're actually gonna keep one more to eat this is number two we're keeping two fish to cook up just one fish real quick just to get some energy the meat on that fish is just absolutely red like a salmon and then there's some eggs in there that we're gonna eat as well not gonna let anything go to waste now the only food that I've left over from this entire trip is one single tortilla and just a little bit of butter uh, probably divide the tortilla in three we're gonna use one part for right now for energy to get up higher into the mountains to those high lakes. Then we're gonna use one third of the tortilla tonight for dinner and then the last third we will save tomorrow for breakfast and that's what's gonna give us the last bit of carbohydrates along with some fish to make it out of the mountains. Ooh. We're gonna use the butter very sparingly. It's loaded with energy for us. All right, the eggs can go straight into the butter. And then we'll cut this trout in half. It's too big for the pan. That's beautiful, absolutely beautiful trout meat. Those eggs are looking good already. I forgot to put a couple scores in the meat so it doesn't curl as much. There's the trout eggs. Mm. Oh man, I'm super rich in flavor. The eggs are one of my favorite parts. Mm. Man, the color of that fish and that meat is just amazing. Let's see if it comes off the bones. Oh, perfectly, dude. Mm. Picked it completely clean. Cook it one more time. It looked like the inside wasn't 100% cooked yet. One thing is you don't want to eat trout raw. Make sure it's fully cooked all the time. It's about one third of the tortilla that we have left. And there's our beautiful, beautiful pink, like kind of orange pink meat uh, trout in here. Oh. oh! Wow, this almost fell in that little swampy pool behind me. Oh, dude, that's so good. Not bad for a survival meal. I like it. We're going to use the last little bit of the tortilla just to get all the, the butter and leftover little pieces of trout out of there. Every last bit of energy. There we go. Pan is empty. Cheers. There we go. Mm. If I start getting up to the lakes and don't have enough energy really to make it, then we're gonna have to think twice because I need to conserve my energy for the climb all the way back down as well. All right, let's go. 
All right, we are completely out of water, so we need to refill on water before we go up to those high lakes. For that, I always carry a couple ways to purify water with me in the mountains, no matter what. One of them is just the good old fashioned water filter, and then the other method I'll show you when we get up to the higher lake and we'll purify some more water there. There we go. Screw the filter right on. First couple drops are for the lake, and the rest is good to drink. Oh, so good. Nice cold mountain water. Don't wait till you're thirsty to drink your water. Always hydrate ahead of time. All right, we're leaving camp because a new higher altitude adventure awaits us. We're loaded on water. We got our fishing gear with us. We got enough to cook something if we catch something up there. Little trail right here. Always a good rule of thumb is try and stick to trails or rocks when you're walking out here in the Alpines. Oh man, it's absolutely beautiful out here. Look at this. Look at this crazy little, little ravine I'm in. What a weird, unique landscape here. It's almost like, geez, like walking on a different planet right now. All these huge boulders of granite and little alpine meadows sprinkled in between. It just blows my mind every time I look at it. Beautiful. An old hat, this thing looks like. This has been here for a while. So what we're just gonna do is we'll we'll pack it out. Don't need to don't need to be out here and deteriorate. Animals will get into it or something. Look at those lakes. Look at all the mountains. That's pretty. So there's three lakes right down there. There should be one more over this way. Let's go, let's check that one out. That's what the one that I'm curious about. We should be getting close. It's a tiny little, like a frog pond right there. The sun is starting to set too. So we don't have a whole lot of time to fish up here, but I just want to get at least just a couple casts into this lake. There's something about coming up into these mountain lakes and laying your eyes on a lake for the first time. There's something very, very special about that. It should be right here. It is just absolutely beautiful. So we're just gonna take a bit of a peek here. I'm probably about 80 feet above the lake itself. And from here, we should be able to see if there's any trout swimming around down here. I think we're gonna to wanna to go right there. See that rock right here? I just saw one surface right down there below us. All I saw was the ripple. I couldn't see the fish because it was kind of in the shade. It wasn't in the sunny spot. Got our bobber rod there but we're gonna get the bullet lure ready first let's give that a try all right so i got a bobber rod ready for us so that we can fish the bobber at the same time as we cast the spinner just to double our chances of catching something up here itty bitty little hook and i have a secret weapon with me on the way up the mountain i collected a bunch of dragonfly larvae and i've got one more he's waving to you guys and all we're gonna do with them is just put them on the hook. There we go. That way he's gonna be down in the water, moving around. Luckily for us, the wind is kind of pushing that way, so it'll suck the bobber kind of mid-water 
an inch of shore there. We're fishing them probably about eight feet deep now. There we go. Dragonfly is deployed. Now we're just going to keep casting the bullet lure here to see if if that'll make it happen or the dragonfly is going to make it happen. I don't know. Not a whole lot of activity here in this lake. There might not be that many fish here. No bites on either rod. That's bizarre. There might really just not be a whole lot of fish in this lake, but it's all good. Just wanna check something out over here just before the sun sets. We're going to the very end of the lake. It looks like there might be some kind of crazy view over there. That's insane. Right here, there's just a little creek that comes out of this lake right here. And that creek flows down all the way down to that lake. And then that lake flows into that lake. And then that lake flows down into another lake. Wow. Gorgeous sunset. All right, we're just gonna make a couple casts here at this outlet area, see if there's anything swimming around here. And then we gotta head back to camp because the sun is setting and I wanna make it back before it gets dark. I know there's got to be fish in here because we did see one swirl, but besides that, nothing going on. The sun, she's a beauty. She's going down though, so I would say let's head back to camp, cook up the one fish that we still have there, and get a good night's rest because we have a long climb out of here tomorrow. All right, so we're all packed up and ready to go back to camp, but I am out of water again. So I'm going to show you guys a second technique on how to disinfect water out here in the mountains. This stuff right here. Uh, what that is, is their iodine tablets. So in order for these tablets to work, you have to mix two tablets with one liter of water. So what I did on this bottle here was I just carved in a little line right here, which is a half liter mark, meaning that at that line of water, I only need to add one tablet. There you go. That's what these little iodine tablets look like. Just these little gray, gray tablets. Now we're just gonna take that one tablet drop them right there in the bottom. Now the toughest part about using this method is that you can't drink the water right away. You have to wait, I wanna say like half an hour. Just give that water a nice shake. And now that the tablet is dissolved, all that you wanna do is loosen your threads on the bottle a little bit and shake it again just so that Anything that got wet with potentially contaminated water now has the iodinated, iodinated, is that a word? But the iodine water touching it so that the threads, everything can get disinfected. We're gonna close that again, and we're even gonna disinfect the nozzle right there. And in 30 minutes, this water will be safe to drink. So exhausted, absolutely exhausted. Yeah, I feel really, really weird right now. Not hungry in a sense of just like starving, like that conscious hunger, but instead like just this lack of energy. And that's probably due to a lack of carbohydrates. I would probably recommend to just go nice and slow. Don't burn yourself out if you're low 
on carbohydrates. Slow and steady wins the race. All the berry bushes though, they're all, they've already lost their berries. Ah, just a couple weeks too late in the season. back to camp just in time to catch the rest of this beautiful sunset wow right up the tail and now we got two delicious looking trout fillets. Oh yeah, no, they're fitting. Look at the beautiful color on the meat on these. Oh, they fit perfectly in the pan. Absolutely perfect. In the meanwhile, I'm just gonna eat this trout tail that we crisped up here. Nice and crispy. I made sure it was super crispy. Precious, precious piece of trout going in the tortilla and the rest we're just gonna eat that or eat like that. I can't even talk. I'm tired. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Man, I've been craving that little piece of tortilla. Oh, it's so tempting to eat the rest, but we gotta save that energy for tomorrow to get out of here. Buttery, delicious trout. Mm. The cold started soaking, soaking into me. So this is, this is so much appreciated. Mm. All right, I'm gonna finish that up. morning guys it was very cold out last night very very cold the weather is shifting now to a cold front and even though it looks beautiful out there currently it is going to rain today i believe there's actually a thunderstorm coming in we gotta take down camp eat our last little bit of tortilla and then get out of here the air mattress by the way did once again deflate i know it looks like there's air in there but it's actually flat and it sucks, it really does, because you wake up a lot at night and have to reposition and stuff. But in the beginning, it's a lot more traumatic of an experience when it first happens. But then after a few nights, you're just like, eh, whatever, it's just gonna be a nasty night again. Oh, I'm get out of here. I would have thought that I would feel a lot more hungry just because I haven't been like eating that much. I'm just kind of conserving energy and food. Feeling pretty good right now, actually. Feeling really good. I think that trout last night helped out and it's probably just because I haven't moved my body's been able to accumulate some energy I 
Uh, here's my pillow that I use. It's just a trout pillowcase. Look at that. Absolute beauty. And I, to conserve weight, just stuff it with spare clothing, socks, and stuff. Now remember yesterday how we used iodine to purify water and I said it's always good to have two ways to purify water with you? Here's why. My water filter system just failed. I have a massive leak coming out of the bag right there. Yeah, imagine if that were a really big hole. I mean, this here, if I squeezed hard enough, it probably would just bust straight open. Then the best way of using this would be maybe as a straw out of the lake, but that's not a way that you could store uh, drinking water anymore for your hikes. Yeah, anyways, there you have it. I thought I'd just show a real life example. This just happened. I was gonna filter some water for the, the way back down on the trail. Always have a couple ways to purify water with you. All right, we are all packed up. We just did a quick look over to make sure we didn't leave anything behind. The rain has started, the weather front is coming and I'll show you in a second what this looks like, but we gotta get the pack on and get out of here ASAP. The mission is now to escape the mountains. The last third of the rationed tortilla. May these carbs get me down the mountain. Mm. Just a little bit of carbs go such a long ways, it's ridiculous. Thank you, Lake, for giving us a good time and keeping us safe up here and keeping us fed. Always be thankful for just the little things like that. The clouds are starting to blow in from the west. This weather's gonna come in a lot faster than you'd think. Up here in the mountains, the weather can change in an instant. If you are ever in a mountain situation where you know the weather's gonna get really bad, like lightning storms or potential super cold fronts, and you are under geared or underfed like me, make it down in elevation as fast as possible. All right, we have made it further down into the valley. The weather so far has held up. I'm seeing some nasty clouds coming in, so I'm super happy to be out of the high altitude mountains. But I've just arrived at an area here where on the way up I spotted some wild mushrooms. They were really small, but they've grown since we were up there. So check this out, what we got right here. This little dude right here is one of the most prized mushrooms in the world. It's a King Bolete. This guy, when I saw him on the trail on the way up, was only like this small. It's just an itty bitty little tiny ball, a baby bullet ball, but it's grown to the point where we want to pick him. So we're going to twist him out of the ground. <sighs> Check out that beautiful mushroom. Oh, smells amazing. The best thing is there's not just one, but there's another one growing right here that we're going to pick as well. All you got to do with these guys is just clean just the dirt away from the stem. Don't actually cut the whole stem off because there's a bunch of meat in there that you don't want to waste. And we always want to make sure that we clean our mushrooms before we put them into a bag um, or a container. That way the dirt doesn't mush up with the mushrooms. So what we're just going to do is uh, whenever we do find some mushrooms is just, just check that whole general area because usually where there's a couple growing, there's going to be a lot more. Oh, sweet goodness. Down here there's finally some huckleberries too. They're essentially like wild. Mm, wild blueberries loaded with sugar make sure obviously whenever you guys are foraging for berries mushrooms or any wild plants that you know what you're actually looking at don't eat anything that you're not 100 percent certain what it is because that could put you into an even more dangerous situation oh, that's sweet berry goodness right there mm. it's just one thing if you know what mushrooms and plants to identify you're gonna have a huge advantage uh, over other hikers because most people like just leave that stuff and never eat it. So they just leave you this platter of food out here that you can just gorge yourself on. More mushrooms right here. Um, these guys are all also in the Belit family. This guy here looks a lot like a King Belit, um, but it does not have, the stem is too dark and the cap looks slightly different. It is edible, but these are all edible, but since we do have the choice of mushrooms, we're gonna let these guys grow and keep only the King Belits.
All right, we just found another King Bolete. Check it out, it's a little baby. Hidden away, way, way down here in the bushes. The mushrooms that we see at the surface are really just the fruit of a larger organism, the fungus that grows underground. Just in case you didn't know that, it's actually really cool. The biggest living being in the world is a mushroom, actually. I want to say it's a giant fungus somewhere in the world that's like the size of a continent. Look at just how plump some of these berries are. And look at the size of some of these. Oh, oh man. Look at this, there's more blue than green on this bush. <laughs> look at the color of my hand, it's, I've got berry fingers. As you can see, we have made it down into the valley. Super happy about that. The vegetation also notice is a lot greener, a lot more luscious. It's just there's more moisture down here, more dirt, less rock. So everything's nice and green. And honestly, I have to say we got really lucky with the weather. Just, just gonna throw that out there. It is still beautiful. So just as fast as things could turn for the worse in the mountains, it can also turn for the better. So that's, that's kind of a double-edged sword. Either way, now all we got is about a four mile hike out of this valley, mostly flat. So unless anything crazy happens on the way, of course, then I'll show you. Otherwise, I'll see you guys back at the van. I just spotted something insane down here. Look at that. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why they call it the King Bolete. That's a solid find right there, baby. Let's go. Unbelievable. Uh, uh, oh, oh, let's go. Monster King Bolete. Wow, look at that. Man, usually the big ones like this start getting kind of soggy, so you don't really want to pick them. Uh, but this one is firm. Plenty of delicious mushroom meat on it. Uh, I don't even, how am I gonna fit this all? Oh my goodness, <gasps> another perfect one. Oh, look at this. Okay, okay, we hit the jackpot. Beautiful King Bolit. Perfect size. Look at all this mushroom that's hiding down deep in the earth. There we go. Look at that. That is a girthy one too. But again, the key to a King Bolit is that the stem has to be white. There's a lot of other ones that look similar with brown stems and red stems and all sorts of colors, but this is the, the prized one. Now here's a good example of a really old one. Stem is probably still good to eat, but he's starting to get soggy, so we're gonna leave him. But you, you little cutie. Oh, and there was a beautiful surprise waiting for us. The young and the old. Mm, look at this, that is one heck of a haul right here, dude. Now this here, that's considered a trophy mushroom right here. A massive King Bolete that's firm with zero worms. One, one worm, one worm. That's probably one of the cooler King Bolets I've ever found in my life. All right, it's close to getting dark. My backpack is absolutely loaded with mushrooms to the point where I can't even fit anymore. I'm just carrying King Bolets in my hands, but check this out. We made it out, we're back at the trailhead. The feeling of when you have been out in the mountains oh, for so long and you're just like, you just want a shower, you just want a warm, soft bed. Oh, soft bed, that sounds so good. But check this out, check this out. Here we go, baby, here we go, here we go. Boo, we got a big old, the yellow van with our name on it. It is official, we made it out of the mountains. Oh, oh, there's a mattress in there. There's, oh, it's the camper van, man. We've, we've actually got the bed inside there. Yes, we made it back. This is awesome. Here is an entire tote 
filled to the brim with wild mushrooms. On the way down, not just do we find more king bolites, but I found a ton of chanterelles. So we did get up there on the foraging, very good on the foraging and the catching. Survival is successful and we have officially made it out of the mountains. So I just found a beautiful spot to pull over the van. We're gonna camp here for the night. I'm absolutely exhausted. Did you hear that? There's an elk bugling back there somewhere. It's, sounds like it's mating season for the elk right now. And I wanna say in summary, the challenges for this trip really were, oh, that elk is still bugling back there. But the number one, the biggest challenge uh, for this trip was my air mattress failing on me. Even though I tried fixing it on day two or three, they just kept leaking. That was probably mentally one of the toughest challenges, especially that happening on the first day. Cause that's always been one of my biggest nightmares besides like getting eaten by a bear when I'm solo backpacking is just not being able to sleep comfortably. But probably the only other serious gear failure that we had was the water filter busting on me. Um, so luckily that happened in the end of the trip, but again, it wouldn't have been that big of a deal because I do always have my iodine tablets with me and we could have boiled water. For me, that's the longest I've ever gone solo backpacking in my entire life. Four nights, all solo, in the mountains. <laughs> the elk agrees. And uh, it's also the highest I've ever climbed uh, with that much weight on my back. That was, it, it was something deep inside here. That's the biggest thing I got away from this trip is just realizing that if you put your mind to something, you can suffer through some stuff and you can still make it fun and you can do it. So if there's any challenges that you guys have, just know you can do it. That was my biggest takeaway from this trip. Besides that, the fishing was beautiful. The landscape was great. If you guys did miss the first two episodes of that trip, then uh, I'll leave the link to those episodes in the video description below. I'd show you the mushroom haul that we had during the trip. There's all of the, the chanterelles, the comfy van with our bed where we're gonna spend the night tonight. I can't wait. And then up here, those are all the king bolites we found as well as our mystery mushrooms that we're gonna identify when we get home. But that is all I got for you guys. I'm just gonna relax now, cook a little bit of dinner, enjoy the view, listen to the elk. And I don't know what else to say. So remember, if you guys are brand new, feel free to subscribe, drop a like on the video. I appreciate it a bunch. Leave a comment, you know I love reading them. And we'll see all of you guys for the next fishing adventure. And until then, you all know it, fish on baby.